in focus? Ooh, she blind. Surprise, I'm back! Now I'm in a different area. This is where I used to actually film my tutorials when I had my old camera. And where you guys are is where I had my backdrop and I've got a mirror on that wall now. And there's a kind of a weird setup going on of lights, lights, and just trying to make this area work. Because I'd like to do some more kind of like get ready with me in here because it takes me so long to actually get ready to film a video while I'm doing my makeup. I might as well try and get some other content out while I'm actually doing that as well. I'm gonna start by putting my hair up because this weave is um, problematic every single day of my life. It's just frizz unless I actually straighten it. Okay, so that's the weave out of the way and I'm gonna get rid of my glasses because I don't want them refracting off of the light. I'm gonna put my lenses in. Electric Snow returns to YouTube, hashtag parentheses, tag, 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 emotional. Look. <laughs> now, if you see the lighting change throughout this video a little bit, I'm just messing about with settings because I'm not used to filming in this area. So I'm just trying to get it to look great, as well as good as it possibly can be with me as a subject. But for foundation and concealer, I'm going to be going in with the Dermacolor, and this is in uh, D1W, I think. This I'm just going to use as like under eye concealer, and spot cover because I've been using a different skincare and as you can see it's been bringing out some impurities in my skin shall we say or I've been reacting terribly to it so let's just fake it till we make it and color them in shall we because we're not going to get rid of them at all especially not on camera so I'm just going to use that under my eyes To brighten as well and cover because I'm always sleep deprived. I don't quite know how this is going to look on camera in this area, but it's looking okay ish on my monitor, so we shall see when I edit it <laughs> because I've got to do a video because I have wanted to come back onto YouTube for quite a while. But I've not really known what to get into doing because with the whole absence, I'll explain that in a minute, but with doing all the transformation videos, I love doing them, but they take so unbelievably long to film and edit that I get burnout from that very, very fast. So I've not really been knowing what videos to do on my channel and this is why I wanted to do a Get Ready With Me as well because even when I am filming videos, I've got to get ready before it, and that takes me quite a while to do this makeup. I've kind of created a rod for my own back <laughs> with getting into makeup. That's what I enjoy doing, but I've also enjoyed doing a lot more of my like plant videos that you've seen come up on my channel, and my frog videos, which I'm very surprised people are interested in, but you're probably interested in it because it's out of the norm and crazy to see somebody with an absurd amount of plants and pet rocks. Um, so I, I, I can see why you're watching it because it's kind of like, oh, let's watch a train crash. So yeah, not knowing what to create on my channel has been kind of a, a thing as well of, you've been off YouTube for so long, what do you come back with? <laughs> Which is a, a daunting thing because people have been sticking around, which I'm extremely thankful for. So yeah, deciding what to do for my comeback to YouTube is been a bit of a daunting thing because I enjoy doing the frog videos as well, but I know a lot of people didn't subscribe for that. So we're going to try and mix up the content of both things on this channel now, because I really do want to get back into filming. I've kind of got the, the buzz back for YouTube again and actually being able to sit down on camera and, and make some tutorials, being able to create different things on this channel that don't take me so long to do because with those transformations, I enjoy doing them and I will definitely be putting more out, but it gets to the point where it takes so long to do them that you burn out very fast when you're spending that amount of time in front of a camera and just looking at yourself all the time because despite contrary opinion to haters, I'm not a narcissist. 
I do not want to look at myself for that long. <laughs> for my foundation, I didn't show you, I'm just using the Estee Lauder Double Wear in the shade Bone, which is a bit light for me at the moment because I have tanned up a little bit. So this isn't exactly my shade, but at £34 a bottle, I'm not going to buy another one in a darker shade, which is going to be unusable in a few months because England is rainy, wet all the time. And my makeup routine and like the way I do my makeup has changed quite a lot from how I used to do it. Like it's kind of got to the thing now where everybody is like 12 years old in the beauty community on YouTube and everyone's like, yeah, full coverage foundation, cut crease, wing liner, bold lip. And I'm just getting like, I'm just going down into like less foundation and a smoky eye and being done because I used to spend hours and hours and hours, and I still spend an obscene amount of time doing my makeup now, but I used to spend forever doing all these crazy looks, even when they weren't for like transformations, just like going out, like not to the shops and stuff like that, but like clubbing and everything like that. But now I'm just like, she old, she don't leave the house, and her makeup has to be done in 10 minutes. <laughs> By 10 minutes, I mean like an hour, not two. As I say, all these kids are like doing full face of full coverage now and I'm just like I'm over that I want my makeup to be done quick I don't want to be cream contouring anymore and all that jazz there's a time and a place and if I'm doing like full drag then yes I will do it but like for my own kind of like boy makeup I want it to be done faster so yeah and this is the Real Techniques Beauty Blender and it's huge compared to like a normal beauty blender this thing is massive so that also helps me in the time frame of not spending six years doing my face I've kind of like improved my skincare quite a bit not obviously you see I've changed skincare I'm testing something out which is probably not going to be used for much longer because it's not agreeing with my beard area because I do still have a little bit of like hair growth there from my, my laser hair removal because I'm blonde naturally, like a dark blonde. So I have quite a lot of blonde in my beard area. So it doesn't really cover or doesn't really remove blonde hair. It only really works on dark hair. So there is still a few little areas in my beard area that has some hair from having laser hair removal. And they are a bastard for ingrowns and reacting to certain products for some reason. It seems to be that the hair follicles are extremely sensitive with shaving anyway and then you put anything on it that they don't like and bitch does it kick off as you can see. But I think I've covered them hmm, within, a, within a standard shall we say. I'm just going to go over the top. Now the Estee Lauder Double Wear doesn't really like anything going on top of it too much it will begin to just pull itself off but I'm just using like a, a pan stick just to bump up the coverage on those problem areas because only I would decide to come back to YouTube when my skin is not looking great take the ball by the horns and starting again is something that I need to do because I think I should probably explain why I've taken so long off of YouTube and it's just basically one of the biggest reasons is life changing since we moved like to this new place there's a hell of a lot that needed doing and as you all know from seeing like the videos i've been putting out with like plants and stuff i'm like an avid plant person and into doing like house plants and gardens and stuff like that and my mental health hasn't really been wonderful i have a good way of doing like jazz hands and and hiding it not necessarily hiding it i'm not ashamed of it i'm a human being we all suffer from mental health problems but People don't need my level of shit in life like they already have their own. So I try to be a very positive person and like not put that out there. And while I was in that kind of like slump mood in which lasted <laughs> longer than it has ever before, I can't necessarily be fake while I'm feeling like that. So coming back to YouTube and like putting on the jazz hands on camera and then having to edit myself doing those jazz hands, watching myself like being happy when I'm not necessarily feeling that way 
I tried doing it and I did film a couple of videos like that and like it just wasn't working. I could not sit there and watch that back and edit it knowing how I really actually felt. So my mental health hasn't been a great thing. So that is a big reason why I have stopped creating. But sitting down on camera and recording myself when I'm not feeling great wasn't something that I could sit back and, and edit because like when you know how you're feeling and then on camera it's like oh look at this I'm happy and like it's just forced. That is one of the biggest things like on my mental health just not being where it is to be able to sit on camera act fake and then edit myself being fake and trying to put it out there because when you're an artist and when you're somebody that creates things it only works when it feels a certain way and like some artists work when they're in that downfall and that's when they create good work but for me to create what I create, I have to be like in a positive headspace to be able to want to do it because the energy of putting in all this work and effort to like do these these creations, which I do enjoy doing when I feel like that, I don't enjoy it. It's not got the 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 emotional connection to it like how I usually do when I feel okay, which is like artists work in different ways, and when you're when you're somebody that does these wacky crazy things, we all do things differently and that's just how I work like I can't force my emotions and I can't force artwork and I can't force creativity when I'm feeling like that I need to step back reassess my mindset fix myself in some way and wait for it all to blow over and that took a little bit longer than usual but now I'm back so Hello again, I'm Let Snow. If you're new here, this is what I really look like with no eyebrows. I'm sorry. I'm just going to take a little bit of lip balm and go over my lips because I have giant lips that I don't want to be chapped because we don't want butthole lips at all. And I just like to do that after my foundation so if there's any foundation that's got onto my lips or any powder, I can get it off without doing too much damage to the skin on my lips. Now I'm just going to take a little bit more of when the powder that I usually set was the Dermacolor Loose Trans Translucent that's hard to say was the Derma it's rubbed off Dermacolor Fixing Powder in the colour Translucent I'll, I'll say it that way it's a translucent loose powder pretty much and I just don't do as much baking as I used to not cakes that was a shit joke. I don't do as much baking as I used to, but I'm just going to put a little bit under the eyes and onto the nose just to catch any fallout from the shadows that I will be using. And like another reason why that kind of like YouTube wasn't the best place to be with like not having the best mental health is all the cancel culture and everything that went on, like people bringing up things that people have said like 10 years ago, like people change and people like learn from mistakes and stuff like that. So it's just like, get a grip people, like really honestly, like this cancel culture, which everybody is playing into, and this isn't inherently a YouTube problem. This is like a people problem. People are inherently just trash and they want to see a train wreck. And that is the most, horrible disgusting thing to realize about humanity which i've known for a long time like humans are literally they want they want to see that they want they want to see like people being disemboweled on camera like as 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 demonetized they want to see like people being ripped apart and it's it's like it's like this tribal old mentality that humans still have which is exhausting to continuously see. I mean, like, more recently, with, like, what's gone on with the beauty community, what the hell are you people doing? Like, makeup used to be about fun. It used to be about makeup. It used to be about creativity. Now, a lot, not all, but a lot of these beauty channels are literally just sip tea. She said this, hmm, I said that, and I'm going to put lipstick on, and hmm, 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 like... Grow the fuck up. Like, I know YouTube is inherently designed for, like, teenagers and, like, kids, but you're teaching this younger generation of people that want to get into the beauty community and makeup artistry that that's the way you act. Like, makeup artistry and hairdressers and, like, and, and the, the whole beauty industry itself has always been clicky. It's always been the, this you-can't-sit-with-us kind of mentality in some context. But we were professionals 
and we had to get on with everybody in everyday life, otherwise we won't get booked. Whereas now, these beauty YouTubers are more popular than makeup artists, like actual makeup artists, and they're putting a real tarnished brush onto the way that we all are. I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm just like not here for it. I know people will probably think that's contrary to belief of the way I, I, I'm like a volatile human being, but like, it's exhausting. Like, yes, I'm an evil person, <laughs> like, evil with a, a, a black heart cased in, in, in nicety in some way. <laughs> it's just got a few layers of blackness around it, but, <laughs> like, I'm, I'd like to think I'm a decent human being. Um, I'm better than, like, most trailer trash. <laughs> now, obviously, with not creating videos, I haven't bought makeup for myself in a very, very long time. So a couple of weeks ago, I decided to have a little bit of a splurge and I bought quite a lot. So I got the blood sugar palette. I got the, you know, these things are the platinum eyes palette. I got one of the Anastasia cream contour palettes when I actually do decide to do that. I bought some more MAC powders, skin powders. I bought some Jeffree Star Velour. Liquid lipsticks, they're all here in front of me. I bought, I did have Weirdo before, but I bought another one because it starts to dry up. And I also bought Doll Parts, Posh Spice, and Celebrity Skin. Uh, so, they are them. And I also bought, they're in the bottom drawer here, so I'm just gonna get them out. I bought the EYN Nude Going Out Fiery, and I believe it's Colour, or Bright. And I bought, oh god, shit, destroying thing. I also bought the Origin colour palette. And these are the 42 shadow palettes from Beauty Bay. Now, I've seen a few people use these before. This is the Origin 42 colour palette. And you can see there's like a hell of a lot of different colours in there, which is good. And 42 eyeshadows in one palette for this price and this kind of pigmentation isn't bad. Like, they're a little bit chalky. Are they the best eyeshadows in the world? No, they're not. They're not like the best perfectly blendable shadows, but if a piece of makeup, whether it's like lip liner, lipstick, whatever, if it makes a mark on the face and you know kind of your way to like manipulate it, use it. I have obviously got good, good makeup, but I will use like drugstore makeup and everything like that as well because it's makeup, like, it's all there to play with, it's all, like, artistry, it's all part of, like, it's paint, basically, and if it works and it makes a mark, why not use it? So, I am not a snob when it comes to makeup at all, in the slightest. Um, and as I say, these aren't the best, I thought I'd get the colour palette because that's the best one to show, these aren't the very, very best shadows in the world, but... The pigmentation, like I'm going to go into this orange here, do two swipes, and I'm going to swatch that. Like, I know my camera lighting is extremely bright, but that isn't bad. And as I say, they're a little bit chalky, they have a little bit of fallout, but if you know what you're doing with makeup, that isn't a problem. I know people want to always bash eyeshadows and stuff like that, and of course there is really, really terrible ones out there, but just build it up and work with it, like, do what you have to do, as long as it's not smudging everywhere of your face, that's the black that's in, there, in that palette. And there's also one that's called Cherryade, I think, which I really, really like. That's why I bought the Blood Sugar palette, because, that's the Cherryade, that's why I bought the Blood Sugar palette, because I know everybody's probably expecting me to get, like, blue blood, because obviously blue hair and I love the colour blue, but I've got so many blue eyeshadows. I've got enough of them, and the Blood Sugar palette has got... I've got powder all over that, great. So the Blood Sugar palette has a lot more shades in it that I'm really going to use, and more in inclined to use, because I do like using a lot more, like, warm colours on my eyes. And this colour in there, I think it's called Dona, that colour is absolutely unbelievable. I love like a coppery orange tone like on the center of the eye. That's like one of my like favorite things to do is like that and like a brown smoky eye. Um, and surprisingly, I haven't used any Jeffree Star eyeshadows before. So this is like my first time getting Jeffree shadows. And to be very honest, they are great. Like I'm used to say using shadows which 
Not always necessarily the best quality. I'm used to using a lot of Inglot, which are great for like the pigmentation, but they can be a little bit, a little bit hit and miss when it comes to blending. They're not necessarily always easy to blend. And it's nice to actually have, which I've, this isn't really a first impression, so I have tested this out. I have played with it a little bit. Like it's nice to have shadows that work with you and not against you. Um, as I say, because makeup's makeup to me. Like I don't care if it's drugstore, I don't care where it's from, as long as it works. And if you know what you're doing with makeup, you can get it to work. But it's nice, as I say, to have shadows that don't fight back. <laughs> so I'm gonna get into doing my eyeshadow now. And I'm gonna be using the Blood Sugar Palette for that. I don't quite know what it is I'm gonna do, but I'm gonna start with Sugarcane, which is this color just here. It's like a nude, beigey kind of color. And I'm gonna take that all over the lid. Just to kind of act as my transition shade. See, and I'm not used to, as you've obviously seen by now, like most of my transformation videos and videos where I'm doing makeup, I'm not sitting in front of the camera talking while I'm doing it. Um, so this is like a new experience for me of not really knowing what to say while I'm filming because usually I'm just there listening to music and then I do a voiceover over the top of it because there's so much going on in this house with like animals and noises that it's not necessarily always easy to find five minutes where it's quiet for me to be able to sit down and like actually film where I'm talking to a camera. Um, so there's that. And that's the thing, like when I first started getting into like YouTube and doing it like properly, that's when we just kind of like moved to this new place. Um, and there's been a hell of a lot that needed doing. Because as I say, you know that I'm really into like gardening and like house plants and plants and everything like that. And that has been my kind of like happy place, if that makes sense. Like I'm completely and utterly 100% my version of happy. When I'm around plants and animals and like just being able to be surrounded by greenery and working in mud, which is surprising <laughs> considering that I'm the way I am, is more my thing to do when I'm not feeling great. Like I just don't want to be sitting in front of a camera or, or anything like that. When I'm not actually working, I want to be in a garden, surrounded by nature and just relax. Although it's not necessarily relaxing with the amount of work that I've had to do here. But that has been my biggest thing which I have been doing away from YouTube is sorting everything out to do with that because that is my biggest kind of like therapy of being able to like buy new plants, plant new plants and like change my surroundings in that way really does help my mindset. So a big thing that I've been doing is the garden at this place and you may have seen like some odd things on Twitter of me with like house plants and with all the animals that I've got as well there's always something to do and that's kind of been more than my main priority which YouTube suffered for for it was me just kind of like living my life in a way and that isn't any detriment to you guys or people who have actually stuck with me on YouTube I am really really appreciative to all the people that have stuck around because it's not easy when you enjoy watching somebody on YouTube and then they don't create. So I am really 100% thankful to everybody that has stuck around on my channel and people that still continue to subscribe and watch my content, even though I've not uploaded it in bloody ages. It's, it's, it's nice to see the fact that you guys will stick with me even if I'm having some time away because that is the thing with YouTube. It's like inherently the most terrible thing you can do on YouTube is take a break because the algorithm does not appreciate people having a life or people having to have downtime. They want you to be upload, 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 push the content, push the content. And I'm I'm not somebody that, that can do that. Like, as I've said, my creativity comes from a good place, not a bad place. Like, I can't be one of these people that puts artwork out and creates when I'm not feeling like my best. So I can't feed into that YouTube algorithm. And it's not all about numbers and money and clicks and everything like that but when you spend hours and hours and hours putting time into doing YouTube videos 
and it doesn't get any kind of appreciation from YouTube itself because either it doesn't recommend you to anybody, it doesn't put your video in the sub box, which I know some people moan about, which they're moaning too much and it's not a thing in some cases, their video which is bad, but in some cases, like, that literally does happen. Like, it gets to the point where I'm just using this intravenous shade on the outer portions of my eye. And that, that does happen in some cases, and especially if you're not uploading, YouTube's just like, oh no, this person's not going to be recommended, this person's not going to be put out. So, it, it's the worst thing you can possibly do to not upload. And I know the games of YouTube, I just don't play it. I'm just not here for playing games. I will create when I feel good, and I that's how I work, that's how I create my best work and stuff like that. So I'm very, very thankful for people that have actually stuck around while I've been having some time off. And it, it's mainly just YouTube also, I suppose, didn't help my mental health at that stage of being somebody that was getting into it. Like, and obviously I'm friends with a lot of other YouTubers that are bigger than me, and it's it's a bigger deal for them, really, than it is for me, because this isn't my main income and my main job but it still affects every single one of us when YouTube itself is turning to shit and playing up and like at the time when I was just like feeling not great and then trying to force out good content and like make it on YouTube while YouTube's just a war zone wasn't where I wanted to be in the slightest like I just wasn't interested in wanting to stick around for that it just it just wasn't somewhere that I wanted to be. When everybody's de being demonetized, people that I won't mention on this channel are causing havoc and ruining YouTube for every other person down the line. It's not somewhere where you where I, as I say, I create my my work when I'm happy. I don't create it when I'm miserable or down. And and doing that when YouTube itself is feeling toxic isn't an easy thing to do in the slightest. And I just needed some time to step out of that as well because my mental health wasn't great and that just wasn't helping. Wasn't helping in the slightest of being of seeing that kind of like, for want of a better word, shit show every single day just continuously kicking off. And the state of YouTube has irre like irrevocably changed, whatever that word is, the state of YouTube has just like changed completely since that point. Like... Everything now is so, or has to be so filtered, has to be so false now, to an extent. And I'm a wham-bam person that just says it how it is, which isn't easy for me to get back into that kind of rhythm of the way things work. Because now it's just like, if I say, F I have to do that to it. Like, it's just, oh, like... YouTube used to be an organic place. It used to be like a creative place. And I say that was the thing with like the beauty community as well. Like this all ties into the same things of people just being inherently trash though. So with with the beauty community and the way that all kicks off, it, it's just people that are the problem. It's not YouTube that is the problem. It's people. People cause YouTube to get this way and people have caused YouTube to get this way. Like the content creators that are at the top think they're indestructible and <laughs> <laughs> it's apparent in some ways they are and they mess it up for everybody else humans just want to see carnage and the beauty community just got absolutely taken miles away from what it ever was like completely and utterly miles away just just thrown everything that it was thrown into the garbage and now it's just all tea spill and she said this and vitamins <laughs> like guys really everybody just needs to take a step down and remember what it is that you're doing you're you're playing with makeup like it's really not that big of a deal like you have so much other shit going on in the world like diamond earring came up in the ocean and it's gone and there's people that are dying it's just this whole this whole concept of feeding into the cash cow of YouTube while that's all going off, I'm just like, why do I want to be creating content on that platform when I'm not feeling great anyway? Oh, by the way, I'm just using that copper donor shade in the center of my eyes. See, this is why I don't talk while I'm doing makeup because I just don't know. I go off on tangents if I start talking and like I won't explain what I'm doing. So 
I know this is kind of like a get ready with me, but this is literally just watching me rant while I paint my face. So, sorry about that. But yeah, I'm just using that on the inner part of my eye, blending that colour into the outer colour. But, that's enough on that. Like, I'm back on YouTube now. I intend to try and be a little bit more consistent than I was. And at least upload more than like one video every six months or <laughs> first time in a year. Like, I, I really do want to get back to doing proper videos in some way. Yeah, that that's the tea. That's where I've been. That's what I've been doing. Sorting my mind out, living life. <laughs> and just being me, existing, doing what makes me happy and not forcing content and forcing something because I'm expected to do it. Because that is the worst thing for me is when I'm expected to to do something. Like, I don't live in that world where people expect things from me. Like, I'm a professional person, I do what I have to do and I do what's right. I don't do what people want me to do. And YouTube wants me to continuously stick up content even when I feel like I want to die. <laughs> so, that's not gonna happen. You ain't gonna get that from me. So, thank you to everybody that has fought against the YouTube algorithm and stayed with me and still grown my channel, which is unbelievable. Thank you so much for that without me being here. And I mean, I'm not delusional. It's not grown crazily, but like I still gain views and subscribers every day, even from my absence. So thank you so much for that. And like all, to all of the people that are new here that aren't like used to seeing me, like I hope you stick around. I hope you do actually find something interesting from these videos. I know I've gained quite a lot more subscribers from my frog videos and I will be doing more like dedicated videos to that but I'm going to be mixing in my transformations with that as well like my channel is never going to be like one thing like I know that's not the best way to do YouTube like you want it to be like this or that and you want to have a structure but I'm a crazy person like expect it like I'm chaotic like <laughs> you will get chaos from me in all shapes all sizes and all varieties so there you go you will see more frog videos if you subscribe for that like they are literally right outside that door, uh, all the frogs. So you will see that. And like from my last frog video, I think I had like, that was like years ago now, I did a frog tour video with like 23 frogs. I'm now at 43. So yeah, that, <laughs> that that's grown exponentially and I still want more. I um, know that's madness, but I'm not one of these pet tubers that doesn't know what they're doing. And it's like, oh, I bought this lizard, I bought this frog, I bought this. Don't know what they're doing and just do it to create content. Like, they are part of my entire life and I've kept amphibians for like 10 years. So, don't think I'm just buying frogs to create content because A, I haven't created content in a very long time and they are my life, pretty much. Like, they are a big, big part of my life and a vast sum of my money goes on them. So, it's not me just being like a hoarder, it's me enjoying the hobby and enjoying it. So there will be videos from my frogs and my terrarium and my plants and stuff like that because I know I started doing like the horticulture things which I do actually also have a secret Instagram for horticulture if people have found it then great. Uh, it's Electra Snow's secret Instagram and the name is horticulture because I started that thanks to Josh Hinkins for giving me that name and that will stay with me now because I do intend to do like more plant videos as well like there's a whole lot that I want to do but like I wasn't feeling in the mindset to do it more frog videos more transformation videos and I want to like involve some like cosplay stuff because that is something that I started doing like years ago I made some like costumes for like some Final Fantasy characters and stuff like that and it's not like I haven't tried to film like as I said there is videos that I did film but I just wasn't in the mindset to be fake on camera and try and like push out content. It just wasn't where I was, I was was feeling comfortable to do it. So I will probably refilm those videos, like the ones that I can. Some obviously I can't refilm because they were like unboxings and like spare of the moment things. But I was creating in some concept until I was just like this isn't for me at the moment. So 
It's not like I wasn't trying. I just couldn't be fake on camera. I will never really class myself as like a beauty channel either because I don't, I'm not one of these people that sits down and this is how you do a cut cruise. Like, I'm not gonna be that bitch. Like, I do these crazy avant-garde makeup looks and I'm more like seasonal for Halloween kind of thing. I understand that. Like, nobody's gonna recreate 90% of the things that I make. So I'm not a beauty tuber and I'm not a pet tuber either. I'm just kind of like somewhere in between, like to say, expect chaoticness from me because that's how I live my life. So yeah, that's enough about me rambling on about what it is I've been and what it is I intend to do. It's kind of like, actions speak louder than words now, bitch, like just get on and do it. So that's what I will be doing, changing things up and actually being more consistent. Like my life is crazy. But when I have the time to actually do YouTube now, which I do because I've got a lot in place where I'm not in that crazy mindset anymore of getting everything done and running around like a crazy person, I will actually sit down and create. So that's kind of like my smudged out eyes. Um, now I'm going to go in with a brow because I need to put brows on this face because I'm Voldemort and don't have any. I think I'm going to do blue brows, so I'm going to be using an Inglot shade. And these are the two shades that I use, like that dark one and this aqua kind of coloured one. They're what I use when I do my blue eyebrows. And I've kind of been liking doing blue brows a lot more, like for a long period of time I always went in with like, like a brown, like an ash brown. And with blue hair it's kind of like the ultimate thing to have blue brows too. So let's do blue brows. That's one brow and I'm going to complete the other one off camera <laughs> just because it'll speed things up a little bit. So that is the other brow done and they're looking a little bit neon on camera but in real light, they look okay. This is just not twins, as usual with me, because I don't have a steady hand to do perfect eyebrows anymore. <laughs> I ain't got the patience for that level of shit. As long as they're on, they look okay-ish. Move your head like one way, be like, hey. Just gonna go in with glucose in the Jeff Star palette, in the blood sugar palette. Because I like a white highlight. And the white in here is pretty good. Let's watch Electric Snow smudge this all over the face and hope for the best. Not everybody likes a white highlight, but I do. Gonna add some definition with some bleak. Is there a black in here? I don't think there is. No, there's no black in that palette, so I'm going to use my black Inglot. I don't know the shades of these anymore. They're underneath, but I can't be bothered to get that. All of my fingers to get them out. I'm using a shimmery black. That's all you need to know. <laughs> That's the thing as well with like another reason why I don't sit there and do like tutorials on what I do with like makeup looks entirely, like eyeshadow and stuff like that. Like I use. If there's browns there, I'll use all four browns and just mix them together. Like, I'm not one of these people that's like, you gotta have wedge eyeshadow from MAC, and you gotta put it just here, and it can't be used anywhere else. Like, bitch, I'll put lipstick on my eyes. I use whatever the hell I damn want. And if it's a green eyeshadow, and you got a green eyeshadow, use a green eyeshadow. You don't need the exact same green eyeshadow the person's using in the tutorial. I'm just... Smudging that all along the lash line. I used to be a big fan of like liquid liner and doing a winged winged liner, but now I'm more of a fan of. I need to concentrate now. Now I'm more of a fan of just smudging like a dark shadow at the lash line. I kind of prefer more of this kind of like smudged, diffused makeup now. So my makeup look has changed drastically from what it used to be. I may actually do a video of people, people used to do videos of 
what I used to do my makeup in high school and stuff like that. Like I didn't wear makeup in school, but I can do like my baby makeup days and what I used to wear. Cause honey, that was interesting. <laughs> I made some mm, choices. That was a choice. <laughs> choices. And that's pretty much as good as that's gonna get. Let's contour the fuse. Contour the fuse. Make me look a few pounds thinner. Because, honey, bitch knows I need it. Because I gained <laughs> far too much. <laughs> but let's not cry here into a bowl of ice cream. Let's just shade that shit away. <laughs> Take her to the swimming pool on her first date, am I right? <laughs> so I used to cream contour a hell of a lot, but now I'm more into powder. Not the white variety. Because <laughs> we will be demonetized. Bring the old jawline back. Like, if you see me do side with photos, like, it's just like, bitch, you don't look like that. <laughs> what the fuck, Sharon? You can get your jawline back with the right angle and the right cotton top. <laughs> I'm just going to blur that back around my neck a little bit because, as I say, this foundation isn't exactly my shade anymore so I'm just gonna go a little bit heavier in with the bronzer around the perimeter of my face just to hope for the best just take that down the sides of my nose I think too much I'm trying to anyway I like to go over the top of everything with a powder foundation. This is NC20 Studio Fix. It's draggy, it's over the top, but I like the way it looks on camera. Curl my lashes. And I recently got this eyelash curler a little while ago because I know people who will go unnamed moan at me for You don't curl your lashes! Because I didn't have an eyelash curler, I broke it, okay? <laughs> but I got this one a little while ago and it's my favourite colour, which isn't one colour. It's like that iridescent stuff like my jewellery. I love like spilt petrol colour, iridescent black. Like anything that colour needs to come with a trigger warning for me because I will eat it up no matter what it is I will probably buy it if it's that colour like it could be the most unpractical pointless object but if it's that colour there's probably a guarantee that I'm gonna want to get it <laughs> now this mascara I don't really like but I've got it this is the colossal big shot waterproof volume express mascara it's okay but the brush holds quite a bit too much product it holds quite a bit of product on that brush. A little bit too much. And it can make your lashes a little bit spidery. Which I'm not a fan of. I think I just transferred that onto my eyeshadow, but never mind. The only thing I really do like about Jeffree Star Liquid Lips is the Dye Fat. These are the only ones that I can like put on without a liner, without the fear of it going everywhere. Because my lips are really uneven and massive and if I usually put a liquid lipstick on without a liner, I mean that's not perfect but it's it's better than it would be with anything else. So I just went and fixed my hair to some extent. 
off camera. So yeah guys, that's this look pretty much complete. I just want to say a big, big thank you to everybody that has stuck around while I've not been on YouTube. I do appreciate it a hell of a lot. And thank you to all of the new subscribers that I've gained over the time of me not being on here. Hi, hello, <laughs> I'm back. Um, just, I do appreciate it a hell of a lot and thank you so much for sticking around. Let me know if you did like this video of this kind of like more sit down talky with you kind of thing while I'm actually doing my makeup. I don't know whether I'll do another one in this situation, like, because setting up this camera was a hell of an ordeal, and the lighting in here is a bit weird and, like, whack, so I don't know whether I'll do another one here. Back there is, like, my sewing machine, and, like, if this fat camera's gonna focus, that's, like, all my work area where I make my bow ties and everything like that, so I don't know if I'll film another one in here, but let me know if you did like this kind of style of video, and if you did, I'll probably do another one, like, in my other room where I actually film my main videos. So please let me know down below if you did like this video. I've not been on YouTube for a long time as I, as you're all aware, um, but please just leave some comments, whatever you want to say, hate comments, where the f have you been, whatever you want to do, you can leave that down below and I will be responding to you guys. All I have to say is until the next video, which will be a lot sooner than this one was, bye bye.